EL teachers, we have a problem. We tend to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Audiolingualism, grammar translation, and even crazy English. Actually, maybe we should have thrown out the bathtub too with that methodology. And what about drilling? No, not that kind of drill. The repeat after me kind of drill. Repeat after me. I am a good student. I am a good student. I always do my homework. I always do my homework. I never cheat on tests. You never cheat on tests. Hmm? Is drilling another victim of our tendency to toss out the baby with the bathwater? Or was it never really that effective in the first place? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Damien Herlihy and I'm a vlogger at Pavilion ELT. Welcome to the March-April issue of The Modern English Teacher, with a focus on young adults. In this episode, I'll be discussing Eric Nikesi's article, To Drill or Not To Drill? That is the question. I chose this article because I hoped it might shed light on the problem of ELT throwing away out of favor methodologies. Maybe Eric's ELT pendulum can help us understand this issue. Nikes believes the history of English language teaching methods can be represented as a pendulous swing between extremes. Each time a new philosophy was put forward, it was for the most part in sharp contrast to a previous approach. The industry lurches from one extreme to another on the pendulum. There have essentially been two points on the pendulum in English teaching. Approaches that focus on analyzing the language or declarative knowledge and approaches that focus on using the language or procedural knowledge. Over the centuries, we have witnessed these back and forths on the pendulum or the throwing out of babies with the bathwater. Eric aims to show that these two opposing views can be reconciled and put together in a more holistic approach to language teaching. To illustrate this, he uses the example of audiolingualism and the technique of drilling. In the past, drill work was a key feature of audiolingual methodologies. What is drilling? Well, at its most basic level, it means listening to a model provided by the teacher and repeating what is heard. This can quickly become repetitive and tedious. Or in my case of studying Spanish, mind-numbingly boring. Though, to the method's credit, I still remember the word for dog in Spanish. Perro, perro, perro. This is why parrot-like repetition of decontextualized chunks of language should be avoided at all costs. For drills to be meaningful, learners need to understand what they are being asked to say. Teachers need to extend the drills, twist them, and link them to meaning. Penson 2021 lists the following reasons for using drills. One, focus on accuracy through immediate feedback. Two, a safe environment for learners to experiment with language. Three, strengthen the physical aspect of fluency by getting those mouth muscles working. Four, repetition as practice. And five, helping students move from lower order skills to higher order skills. You need the foundation before you can start getting creative with language use. Drilling provides that foundation, helping students to internalize basic grammar structures and vocabulary. Once these building blocks are in place, learners can then focus on more complex language use and creative expression. So, while drilling at times may not be the most exciting activity in the classroom, it is an essential component of language learning that should not be overlooked. Let's now look at five types of drills that you can use in the classroom suggested by BBC Learning English. Substitution drills. You can change one word at a time. I like milk. I like coffee. I like old English books. I like Marvel movies. 
Transformation drills. You can change the person, the tense, or make it a negative. I often go abroad. I often go abroad. My best friend. Me best friend often goes abroad. Simple past. My best friend often went abroad. Negative. And my best friend didn't often go abroad. Change drilling. You ask a question in a particular target structure to a student. That student responds and asks a question to the next student, who then asks a question to the next student. Have you visited Germany? Yes, I have. Have you visited Thailand? Split drilling. You separate a sentence across a number of students and get them to say one word each or group them according to gender or the first row and then the second row. We love learning English, especially on Thursday mornings. We love learning English, especially on Thursday mornings. Back chaining and front chaining. For back chaining, start at the end of the sentence and gradually work your way to the beginning. This helps really well with pronunciation, while front chaining works the opposite way. At home. At home. Stayed at home. Stayed at home. I'd have stayed at home. I'd have stayed at home. It seems drilling still has a place in the classroom. It is an important step towards freer language practice as long as it's made more challenging and creative. So stop swinging on the pendulum of extremes and instead be guided by what activities are most conducive to learning. Changing bath water from time to time might be useful, but don't throw too many babies out with it. Maybe a better way is the path of principled eclecticism. Use the best of what each methodology has to offer based on what you believe helps students learn a language. Now I'd love to hear from you. Do you use Drilly in the classroom? And remember to subscribe to The Modern English Teacher to take your professional development to higher heights. See you next time.